right, we're going to tackle the end of the Cold War. Going a little bit out of order in my videos here because I thought it made most sense to talk about the end of the Cold War after we talked about the rest of the Cold War. So here we go. Uh, what you need to know is the end of the Cold War comes in 1991, and there, there's many factors that are going to play a part in this. Uh, American military and technological developments, the Soviet Union's failed invasion of Afghanistan, and public discontent and economic problems in the Eastern Bloc communist countries uh, in East. Eastern Europe. Uh, but to get to that point, we're going to talk about some major trends as we as we move towards the end of the Cold War, starting with what was known as detente. Following the tensions of the Cuban Missile Crisis back in the early 1960s, the U.S. and the Soviet Union will enter into a period of easing tensions called detente. Um, this era it also featured easing relations between the U.S. and China and between Eastern Europe and Western Europe. Now, the causes of this detente, uh, the, the U.S. and the Soviet Union are each suffering from some economic stagnation, especially as we get into the 1970s. The United States has hopes of ending this Vietnam conflict that they'd been into, into for so long. Uh, economic improvement um, could, would come through maybe U.S. and China trade relations. And also, let's mention that threat of nuclear war that became so clear um, with the Cuban Missile Crisis was always there. Some of the effects of detente uh, will be some uh, arms reductions talks and treaties like the Strategic Arms Limitations Treaty, SALT, um, and new trade connections uh, with the Chinese and the Soviet Union uh, for the United States. But as we move into the 1980s, uh, detente is going to come to an end and we enter a final phase of, of the Cold War. Uh, in 1979, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. This is one of those proxy wars. Um, they invaded in, in order to support, in their words, the Afghan government against a threat of revolution, like the revolution that had just happened in Iran. This ushered in uh, what we call the Second Cold War, uh, resuming tensions for nuclear threats. Uh, in 1980, the United States elected Ronald Reagan, um, and um, Ronald Reagan would agree to support Afghan rebels against the Soviet Union. He also launched what was known as the Strategic Defense Initiative, uh, also called Star Wars, where the United States would put missile defenses up in space. Now, this never actually happened, but we did pour billions of dollars into it. And it kind of freaked the Soviet Union out that we might be eliminating the prospect of mutually assured destruction. The United States will also look into new missile developments and submarine developments and new bombers, um, just essentially pouring money into our military to, um, to have this new and advanced military that the Soviet Union would not be able to compete with. Um, as the Soviet Union realized they couldn't compete economically or militarily with the United States, a new Soviet leader named Mikhail Gorbachev uh, grew open to uh, having new arms reductions talks with Ronald Reagan um, and starting in the, the mid-1980s. Uh, this is going to bear some fruit. In 1987, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, the INF Treaty, was passed, which limited long-range nuclear missiles. Um, Mikhail Gorbachev would also usher in some political and economic reforms in the Soviet Union. Um, perestroika is the, the Soviet word, the Russian word for a restructuring of the Soviet economy, where Gorbachev would allow some free market ideas to enter into the Soviet economy. And then glasnost. This is a word for openness, like a political openness that hadn't previously existed in the Soviet Union, um, where uh, many were granted political freedoms, especially on a local level, and the ability to critique the government by, by a press uh, would start to grow. Uh, Gorbachev would ultimately decide to remove those troops from Afghanistan in 1989. So um, the, the meetings that took place between Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev, the agreements that they came to, and Gorbachev seeming to be willing to reform in the Soviet Union definitely took us towards uh, an ending of this Cold War conflict. Now, in Eastern Europe, as citizens uh, of Eastern Europe started to push for greater political freedoms, the Soviet Union under Mikhail Gorbachev 
did nothing to prevent them from reforming politically. Unlike previous uh, attempts at, at moving uh, to a more democratic government that we saw in Hungary or Czechoslovakia in the 50s and 60s, Mikhail Gorbachev is not going to step in. It starts in the 1980s with a, a, a man named Lech Walesa uh, in Poland, um, who will lead a popular movement known as Solidarity that pushed for more political freedoms and democratic elections. These were ultimately offered in 1990, and Lech Walesa will, will actually be elected the president of a new and democratic Poland. In 1989, the Berlin Wall that had been built in the 1960s to divide the communist East and, and, and capitalist democratic West uh, Berlin, that wall is going to be torn down and, and East German soldiers are just going to let it happen. Uh, the reunification of Germany, East and West Germany come together uh, officially in 1990. In 1989, the Velvet Revolution, because it wasn't violent, it was kind of soft, uh, took place in Czechoslovakia uh, that led to democratic reforms and an end of the communist government there. Uh, and then finally, as Eastern European citizens pushed and gained more political freedom, various republics of the Soviet Union started to do the same. In August of 1991, the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania uh, pushed for independence and, and ultimately received it. Um, in September of 1991, the Soviet Union, what was left of it, officially dissolved. And on December 25th, Mikhail Gorbachev resigned as Soviet president and the United States recognized the independence of the remaining um, Soviet republics. And this really marked an end to the Cold War. So what do we wanna take? The Cold War's end comes from uh, the, came following the developments of new military technologies by the United States and the Soviet Union's inability to maintain an expensive arms race. Also, the reform-minded leadership of Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan in the United States um, as, as president, who were each willing to talk with each other, um, and we would see tensions ease in the late 1980s. Popular movements for liberal political reforms would contribute to the breakdown of the Soviet sphere and eventually the collapse of the Soviet Union. So there you have it, 45 years of Cold War now at an end. We'll talk to you next time.